Hello everyone, welcome to the Dusma, your favorite boutique Eurovision blog that awards you 12 points. In today's video, we will be sharing our top 3s of Benidorm Fest 2022 with you. And as you know, Benidorm Fest is the Spanish national final for the upcoming Eurovision Song Contest. And yeah, this is this is a new national final and we are so excited. This national final is packed with amazing songs and it was such a tough time, you know, deciding our top threes. But yeah, here we go. Um, our team members will be sharing their top threes with you, including me. And yeah, without further ado, let's go. In number three, I have Raiden with Calle de Llorería. Gosh, that's hard to say. <laughs> um, I love this song. There's a lot to... Actually, there's a lot to love about uh, most of the songs in Benidorm this year. But I really like the traditional Spanish element that comes through. The beat once, you know, is great. I want to get up and dance. It's just all around a very cool song. Um, and um, I think it will do really, it could do really well on the big stage as well. There's plenty of room for epic staging. Um, I just love the feel. I love the music. Um, and yeah, that's my number three. My third choice in Bendon Festival in Spain is Lady Brava's Rafaela. <laughs> I think the song takes us to the music culture in the 80s. Uh, I had a difficulty in choosing uh, between Raiden's uh, Calle de la Lloreria and Rafaela. But I made my choice with uh, Rafaela song. It's because it's so catchy, it's uh, rhythmic. Uh, so I think uh, it will be the one that the jury uh, will sell it. Here we go. In my third place, I have Chanel or Chanel uh, with the song Slow Mo. <laughs> I think that this song is one of the of the catchiest song that we have this year in this uh, selection. Uh, it's very catchy. I mean, I like the the vibe of the song, the um, the chorus of the song, and it's a, a perfect song to dance to, to bop to. Um, probably it it lacks of something to make it stand out. But I hope that they will um, will do something for the live show. I hope that they will elevate it uh, somehow because the song is very very catchy and probably you won't like my comparison but she gives me a lot of uh, Eleni Fureira and Fuego vibes. So I imagine this song with a, uh, an amazing uh, choreography and I think that whatever happens to, to her and to this song in the contest I think that she will serve us uh, a bop. So uh, I'm really curious to see uh, what the staging will look like, uh, what the, li the live will look like, uh, but I think that we'll have uh, something very, uh, uh, very poppy. Entry, which is in my third place, is Cal Calle de la Llorera. So I have to say that even though I listen to that song in snippet but not the full version it is very powerful as what the artist wrote about it it talks about judgment against peace hate which was done not only in social media but also in real life in my number three spot i have postureo by azucar moreno It's amazing to see that Eurovision veterans returning 
uh, to a national final, hoping to represent their country once again, and especially after what happened to them in 1990 in Yugoslavia. The song is a massive bop. It's kind of expected from Spain, but it's it's almost a cliche, but it's enjoyable AF. I really love the Spanish flavor of this and also how the performers, you know, put their soul in it. You can definitely feel that Spanish fuego in them. And I love it. It's, you know, people will listen to this and love this. Um, there's nothing too much wrong about this. Um, but as much as I enjoy this song, I think Spain should pick something else because they have a lineup full of different, you know, unique songs, different genres, etc. So this is the year where Spain needs to take a risk and something daring, something uh, that they have never sent to Eurovision before. And there are um, actually two songs that do that well, better than Postureo. But as I said, it's a Spanish pop that is really resonating with me. I love the Spanish flavor in it, and therefore it gets my number three spot. In number two, I probably have most people's favorites. So my number two is Tan Shungera with Terra. <laughs> And I really, really do love this song. It was so close between my first and second place. I love that this is like a hard hitting folk song. It's not sort of like a, you know, a pretty laid back folk song. It is folk pop. It's, you know, it's got a message. It's hitting hard. It's great. Um, you know, I love that the staging on this, in my mind, the staging could be so epic. It could make such a huge impact. Um, the one reason it's not my number one is that when I listen to um, other music by Tashungera, um, there were other songs of theirs that I preferred. So for example, Figa, um, it had sort of more of a, a dance beat to it, which I think translates better in Eurovision. Um, I had more of also more of a sort of a stronger Arabic and flamenco influence. Um, I mean, in figure, you can actually hear the um, castanets, <laughs> those things. Um, and I actually thought that that was a better song or would have been better for Eurovision. So that was the only reason why they're in my number two and not in my number one spot. My second choice in the Benidorm Festival in Spain is Blanca Paloma's Segredo de Agua. Spain is expected to send a rhythmic song with Mediterranean melodies. I think it is uh, so mysterious and emotional and it it's, uh, touches your soul. It's so deep. I would be surprised if uh, the jury uh, selects Blanca Paloma and it will be a strong candidate for the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, let's move on now to my second place. Uh, in my second place, I have Sara Deop with the song Make You Say. I'm a make you say. Um. Uh, this is the kind of song that I usually like. I mean, urban song, urban music, black music, uh, R&B, and uh, also Latino vibes. I mean, this is the kind of song that I always listen to, uh, especially when I was younger, when I was a teenager, for example. So that's why I always liked this kind of music. Uh, I think it's it's a cool song. Unfortunately, as I said, for slow mo. Uh, this song lacks of something. I mean, um, we have a very international song. I mean, I think that 
uh, Make You Say and uh, Echo are the two most international songs in the contest. We have very traditional Spanish song, but uh, these two songs are different because they bring something very, a very international vibes, vibe, and uh, and I I I have to say that I like it. Um, this song is very radiophonic, it's very uh, enjoyable to hear, it's the kind of song that you could listen to on Spotify, on uh, or YouTube, on the radio. Um, unfortunately, as I was saying, uh, it doesn't, it lacks of something. I mean, um, especially the ending, in my opinion, that, I mean, the only issue that I have with this song is the ending, that I found a little bit underwhelming. Um, but uh, I hope that they will add something more to the for the live show. Uh, I hope that they will add something to make the song a little bit more overwhelming because the song is good. I mean, I like her also uh, Sarah's voice. Um, and so, yeah, I I really um, I'm really curious to see uh, the staging um, to see this song live. So the next one which is in my second place, is The Secret of Water, Secreto de la Agua. It is very mystical. So why I can say it is very mystical? Because Secreto de la Agua was inspired from the Eurovision Song Contest 2021 semi-final one interval act titled the power of water the artist shows the element from our planet and i love the fact how she added emotions to that song in my number two i have terra by tan shugueras this is a massive favorite of this national final and you can tell why it's something different from Spain like we are not used to these kind of interestingly ethnic songs of course all uh, like a lot of songs from Spain carry the Spanish identity but this is something else this is more like go a shum or even Palishe by Tulia this is like leaning more towards to that uh, subgenre under ethnic songs um, I love that this is not holding itself back it's ethnic to the limits to the fullest um i love the harmonies the girls can sing amazingly well um my little issues are that it's kind of repetitive and also it is mid-tempo and it's i absolutely agree with rin on this point um you know shum has her dance beat as well and that's what people could connect to it easily like more easily although it was a really local song whereas in this one it's neither a bop nor a ballad it's mid-tempo and yeah there's a there's an electronic beat in the background which is catchy but i'm not sure if it will it can grab masses into the song like attract masses um it's kind of risky but i think the risk should be taken for Spain's situation because they are struggling a lot and therefore this is an amazing option. And in my number one spot for this year's Benadorn Fest is Azuka Moreno and Postureo. <laughs> And um, I mean, I'm old. I love Asuka Moreno. They've been around for a million years. I remember them from way back. Um, this song is a banger. Like literally the first time I heard it, I was like standing up and sort of moving around dancing. It's a fabulous, you know, flamenco, Arabic infused banger of a song, which I really want to see on the Eurovision stage. The staging could be epic. Um, I mean they're strong enough to carry off you know the song in any kind of setting and I just really really love it um it's a good quality song their voices are wonderful 
And um, for me, that was the best song this year. One thing I wanted to say before I sign off was that this year's Ben Adorn is just so good. There are so many amazing songs. I mean, finally, Spain has decided to bring it with a really, you know, big pool of amazing songs. I mean, I look at my list here and I've got sort of special mentions for Rigoberta Bandini, the 80s feel, such a good time, that song. Javier Mena with Culpa, that's kind of almost a Scandipop type song and you know how much I love those. Um, Sara Diop, Make You Stay, I that is such a great dance song. Shanin uh, Echo, Unfortunately, although his voice is magnificent, he reminded me a little too much of Blas. And um, I love Blas. He was done dirty last year. And I just kind of feel like I need something different this year from Spain. But the point of all this is, is that this year's competition is amazing. And, you know, pretty much any of those artists could go to Eurovision and I'd be totally happy and thrilled for Spain for sending such a great um, entrant to 2022. So. Cross my fingers that um, Spain selects someone amazing. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard. And um, let's wait and see. My favorite song in Benidorm Festival in Spain is Azucar Moreno's Postureo. <laughs> with a beautiful song called Bandido uh, and to fifth position. This time I think the Spanish duo didn't lose any uh, energy and enthusiasm and I think it will take the top five position if chosen by jury. Here is my my personal number one in my number one, I have Terra by Tanjugueiras. I think that we can describe this song with just one word. I mean, this song is powerful. <laughs> I mean, you may like it or not, but uh, you notice this song. You, uh, you. It's a song that makes you turn around, uh, even if you don't like it, but uh, you you notice this song because it just hits you right in the face. On the other hand, I have to say that it's a little bit risky, in my opinion, this song. I mean, it's a little bit risky because uh, uh, I think that mainstream viewers may not totally get the meaning of the song and the importance of their presence uh, at the Eurovision. Uh, Tanjugueira's presence at the Eurovision, so I'm a, I'm a little bit afraid of this, but uh, it's such a high quality risk. I mean, it's a wonderful risk, and we should take it. So, um, and I also think that if Tanjugueira's wins, I think that uh, Spain will have to invest all its money, um, all its money. On a good staging to put on a, an incredible staging because this song deserves um, a very incredible huge fantastic staging I mean with camera um, framings with uh, light effects uh, with LEDs and whatever good and epic uh, can come to your mind uh, because it's a strong song and it needs a really strong staging so I think that uh, uh, if Tanshugueras wins, Spain will have to do uh, a, a really good work with the staging. Uh, then I also, I mean, I like this song because uh, I like the fact that it's very authentic, it's very traditional. I mean, they don't sing in Spanish, they sing in Galician. Um, and I like this, the fact that uh, we, uh, we can know um, a part of Spain that uh, is pretty unknown uh, outside Spain. I mean, uh, it's pretty unknown uh, abroad. But, uh, and, and this is the, the thing that I like the most because 
uh, we need uh, this kind of song at Eurovision. I mean, a song that celebrate music and uh, every kind of music from every part of Europe. So um, we know Spain for Barcelona, Madrid, but we know a little bit less this this aspect of Spain. And last but not the least, the winner, my winner of the Spanish selection is Terra, performed by Tansugueras. So I place them first. Like any other entries, it is very interesting, but that one really stands out for me because it is very strong and powerful. They added some ethnic stuff to it. I enjoyed listening to it since when it is first released. And my winner of Benedorm Fest, my first place, and I think who Spain should send to Eurovision should be Raiden Calle de la Llorería. This is ticking a lot of boxes. It's it's rap, and we have never seen rap from Spain recently. Um, it has a charismatic singer, like the presence is there, the artistry is there, uh, the vision is there. There's already a concept if you watch the music video. I really like the table concept. It kind of reminds me of a monster like me, Spa um, Norway 2015. Um, but it actually has another take on the table concept. It actually almost feels Italian to me, and I already mentioned that in my uh, reaction video as well. It has this Italian flavor too. Um, therefore, I think this is a this is a music style that can appeal to a lot of people. Um, and if you transfer that concept to the big stage, I think it can work. It can work amazingly well. Um, one slight issue, the verses are quite long. I would maybe cut out some bits of that so that we have more time for the chorus and more, you know, interesting parts. Because when it's rap and you don't really understand the lyrics, it may kind of get monotonous. Um, yeah, to avoid that, maybe add some different elements, add some different bits. But it's already good as it is, so it doesn't necessarily require a revamp. Therefore, Raiden for Eurovision 2022. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye. Ciao.